Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. So I was looking at my needle book and it desperately needs swapped out with a new one. It's starting to get all ragged and it's, it's time. The felt on the inside is sagging. Re relatable, right? <laughs> so I thought I would make another needle book a little bit differently this time. Maybe not exactly like this one. And I will also explain the summer challenge that we'll be starting as of after this video. Sound good? I'm going to cut this down. It is a file divider, like a... Of course, I had to make it match exactly my desktop so that you can't see it. You're welcome. Grab this. But that's okay. It'll get covered up really quick. I'm going to just slice off the tab part. So while I'm doing that and cutting all my pieces, I will splain. So the theme of this challenge is if you were a journal, what would you be? Do you remember maybe, maybe, maybe this is something you did in grammar school when you were little. One of the first writing assignments that I remember having once we could write paragraphs and complete thoughts was if you were an animal what would you be or if you were whatever <laughs> what would you be and the teacher expected just a paragraph explaining what you would choose to be if you were going to be anything other than yourself going along those lines that kind of a thought process. I figured we could do that in a similar vein with if you were a journal, what would you be? So there's not going to be a ton of rules because that would kind of defeat the purpose. At least I think it would. Let me, let me, let me line this up and cut it because if I talk and cut at the same time, I, I, I will mess up most most assuredly there will be a couple of guidelines i'll put it that way to abide by how's that and those guidelines are that it has to be a usable book of some kind whether it has pages to write on or pages that have like a book already printed on them or images. It has to have pages inside, turnable pages. So it can't be a digital book. It can't be an illustration of a book. It has to be a 3D actual book project of some kind. What I mean by if you were a journal, what would you be or what would it be? This will be kind of an introspective self-portrait type of project. When you start thinking about your project, think about using things that define you, that reflect your personality. So whether it's the colors that you like, if you use paper, the type of paper you like, let's see, uh, whatever it is that you choose to build your project out of, or if it's going to resemble something. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to influence your gut feeling about it. If you're an analytical person, like a logical linear thinker, you might have a more realistic portrayal of what you are. If you are more of a out-of-the-box person, it might be a more obscure type of representation, metaphorical, not literal. And those of you like me that don't even realize that there ever was a box, who knows what you're going to come up with. So don't feel like like anything is wrong because nothing's going to be wrong. I just hope that all of you put some thought into it and maybe don't take the easy, most obvious direction. Perhaps really sit down and think about it before you dive in. Give it some thought. Try not to discuss it with other people because they might influence your project as well. You know how that goes. If you're doing a group project at school, of course it's a group project, so you're supposed to discuss it amongst yourselves. 
it's kind of like you have a thought and everybody else in the group has a thought and then you end up compromising, you hope, on what it is that you're going to be doing and maybe things that you hadn't thought about before get instituted into the project and that's not something that you would have planned. So I, I'd like to avoid that as much as possible because then the project wouldn't really be reflecting you. It would be reflecting somebody else's perception of you. I was trying to make this not complicated and there I go. Let's throw some calculus into it. So if you've never made a book before, don't worry about it because it's not going to be a contest or anything. This is a personal challenge. So if it's something that you think that you would like to participate in, I highly encourage you to at least to try. I'm going to give everybody a full 30 days, mostly because I need a full 30 days. I haven't even started on mine yet. I haven't even thought about it. What I personally would do, haven't even given it a thought. So I will be starting the same time you guys are. I have been dealing, let me keep cutting or this is gonna take forever. This time I'm gonna do things a little bit different. The cards, the for the little front and back cover pieces are going to be sandwiched in between the fabric on the outside and some felt or something on the inside. So instead of having the card on the outside where it could get dog-eared, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sandwich. And I did grab some of this upholstery fabric that I have, and I thought I would find a spot, center it on that medallion right there. So it doesn't matter what size you decide to build your project, that will be up to you. Although if it's too itty bitty, teeny tiny, it might be hard to see <laughs> for those of us that would be looking. If you allow us to look, that is, because that's also going to be up to you. I mean, I guess that's really it. Like I said, I didn't really want to impose a bunch of rules or anything on you because I didn't want to influence your thought process. So, yeah. So just remember that it needs to be a usable book of some kind, whether it's for reading or writing or drawing or it has pictures in it, whatever. It needs to be bookish. And it needs to have some type of pages in it, which if it didn't, it wouldn't be bookish, right? And it has to be a physical project. It can't be a drawing or a digital representation or something like that. So those are the basic parameters, guidelines that I hope you abide by. How's that? So you can start thinking about what a book would be if it were you. And hopefully when you are done, I mean, it will definitely make sense to you. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. But I hope that the materials that you use and that the final end product that you end up with will be undeniably reflective of you as a person. Does that sound like a plan? So for those of you that are like, uh, I don't even know where to start. I hear ya. So what, personally, what I would try to do is drop everything on the floor. Oh, there goes two. I would get out a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen or several pens, sketch things out and draw things out and mind map. I'm more of a I need to see it, but I need to draw it out. My mind's eye needs to portray what it's gonna look like on paper so that my eye eyes can see it too. Just helps me to figure things out a little bit better. If you wonder what I'm doing, I'm making a mess, so. I mean, yes, I am making a mess, but I'm just dabbing a little bit of white glue on the edges of this fabric because it will ravel like the Dickens if I don't, and I don't really want to do that. Don't know if I'm gonna be sewing it. I'm not feeling it today. I didn't feel well yesterday. My blood pressure tanked yesterday. I woke up tired. I even slept, I use that term loosely because sleeping is not something I always do very well. But when I got up, I was exhausted. It was like I hadn't slept. I hurt all over. And that's why I got up was because I couldn't get 
comfortable. I still had been in bed for probably six hours, but I was exhausted, just exhausted. And then I checked my blood pressure and I was like, maybe that's why. I mean, that's one of the reasons. It was, what was it, 87 over 57? A little low, a little low. My blood sugar was fine. My blood pressure tanked and I felt like a zombie. I just kind of zoned out because the brain fog was more like brain molasses. It wasn't even fog yesterday. Total, pure, utter exhaustion in every way, shape, and form. And I had a lot to do yesterday and none of it got done because I was fighting staying awake and alert. Well, if you've ever been there, it's killer. And for no reason whatsoever, there's no reason for that to happen other than the fact that I deal with an autoimmune disorder that sneaks up on me like a ninja. Oh, you have stuff to do today? Silly girl. No, you don't. Here, have some pea soup to try to think through. I'm going to fold this in half so I can kind of see where everything's going to be going because this will go here-ish and then this will go here-ish and then it will fold like that-ish. So I'm going to take a little bit more glue. And I'm going to glue these down I'm going to center it in there. Uh, here we go. And then this one shall go over here on the side. When you are finished with your project, if you have a YouTube channel, you could do a flip through if you wanted to. If you have Instagram or Twitter or something, you could post it there. I will put a hashtag underneath this video so that you can tag it if you would like. And that would make it easier to find. And also, right before the 30 days is up, I will post a video, kind of a everybody get together and those of you that have made journals comment in the comment section and you can tag it and then that way I'll be able to go through there and see everybody's tag because I like to do a slideshow if you don't have um, social media totally cool don't even worry about it I will put an email down underneath that same video where I tell everybody to comment and tell me where their project is located. I will put a an email so that you could just send pictures or a picture to to an email if you want to be included in on like the slideshow video. Okay. I have this felt, so I thought I would put that on the inside. Yes. I'm still not like totally 100% today, so if I seem a little more scatterbrained than usual, you are not wrong. I thought this rusty color was kind of nice with that. I'm going to make it just shy of the size of... See? It's like I'm not even completing full sentences. Sorry. About there. And about there. I have a square. When I get done with this, I get to call the insurance company because for some reason, unbeknownst to me, I don't get the whole thing. Maybe somebody can explain it to me why my prescription, they pay for it one month, what the part that the insurance that we pay for is supposed to, supposed to cover, right? And then the next month, the refill, they're like, oh, this is your prescription? Like we're supposed to be covering this? It's like you covered it last month and it's the same one. This is the next refill that's written on the prescription that was written recently. It's like I have to call them every month. Every month something goes wrong. Every month they're like, oh, well it didn't go through because of this. Well, why did that particular problem not stop it from getting refilled last month. Oh, I don't know. Oh, well, that that's great. That's awesome. I'm great that you don't know because now that makes two of us and that makes me super confident in your ability, right? 
So shoot me. Just shoot me. Insurance, taxes, gravity, printers. They're out to get us. It's so funny is I've started recording the conversations because I was thinking, okay, maybe it's me. Did I miss here or misunderstand? Did something happen to where I just, I didn't get what the customer rep was saying or something? So I've recorded some conversations, but my pharmacist even called and went, what is the hang up this time? She was so frustrated. And she says, what they told me, for one, made no sense because it's like this brand new rule that they came up with. She says, literally, it's a brand new rule, but nobody got a heads up about it. Nobody got any documentation. She says, I didn't get any emails or notices that this was changing. I personally didn't either. I didn't get that either. So let me tell you, there's going to be some phone calls. I have to wait till I have some more brain power because your girl's struggling. How about some mustardy gold? Baby poop gold. But anyway, as I was saying, what if somebody was really, really ill and they didn't get their prescription, it didn't get filled because of X, Y, or Z, or a new rule came up, but you didn't know about it, so, you know, sucks to be you, right? And then somebody that's really, truly ill and not feeling well, just the process of calling the insurance and actually getting through to somebody, like a real person, that's half the battle. And then explaining yourself again and again and again and again, because that's what you do. Can you tell I'm fed up? I'm done. Stick a fork in me. I am now Sunday roast. I'm going to put, just like I did with this, just a little patch, a little soul patch on each side. <laughs> so I want it to be, let's say, two inches. So anyway, that's, I was just thinking, I can handle calling in and trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, I couldn't yesterday, but just the fact that you have to call in every single month because they're not communicating is unnecessary and it's maddening. I'm over it. And um, somebody is going to, somebody is going to hear about it because what if somebody like really, really needs their medication and something bad happens to them because they can't get it. What if they have to go to the hospital or heaven forbid, what if they die because some mess up? It's just such needless convolution. It's just dumb and I'm over it and I need to yell at somebody. <laughs> and I don't yell at people. I'll put it this way. I'm not gonna yell at somebody that just answers the phone because it's not their fault. They talk to angry people every day, all day long. That's customer representatives. I feel bad. I feel bad for those people. But I want to find a phone number or an email or something to the powers that be. They will get a talking to because I'm done. Your girl's done. <laughs> Maybe they'll drop me from the insurance. That could probably happen too, couldn't it? If you call an insurance company and tell them they're stupid, they might drop you. So these can be sewn on. Uh, you can you can glue them, except you wouldn't want to glue where you're going to be sticking through the needle because then you'd have to you know you have to just barely glue around the outside edge. There is thread in the sewing machine. Just give me a second. I will go sew around these. Don't ask me what happened there. I don't know. I'm going to glue down right on the card, right there. I'm going to glue that part down. And now I know I was talking about insurance and getting mad at them, but I can't remember exactly what my point that I was, was I done making my point? I don't remember. It is going to be 100 degrees today. Of course, it was like 97 yesterday. So it's not like it was, wasn't that much better, but I think it's just, uh, for one is way too early. And usually we don't get that here. That's not something that we usually get a lot of is 100 degree temperatures. And I know, and you're thinking, but but Nick, you can't handle the cold. Like, you, you've got to love the heat. Mm -mm -mm. Nope, because the heat makes me ill. It makes me sick. Can't handle the heat either. I am a Goldilocks girl. <laughs> Not too hot, not too cold. 
high maintenance. I'm really not. I am just temperature extreme intolerant. I think everybody is to some extent. I don't know anybody that likes it really, really cold or really, really hot, but some can handle one over the other. I am a big weenie. Now I'm gonna go sew through this middle spine part because I didn't glue that. So I'm just gonna sew down that little middle, little middle spine part. Hold that thought. Go me. So when I was putting the label on, you didn't even see that. You didn't even see that. I just peeled the one off of the old needle book and I put that on the front of this one because I'm lazy. Although I think this one looks much more sturdy and the needles can just go right through this felt because the felt is not glued to the felt behind it. It's just sewn. So there's a empty space pocket be behind the yellow felt, the baby poo colored felt. And that's a sewing needle. That doesn't need to go in here. Hopefully this one will last a little bit longer than the last one. Just in case I need a safety pin, I guess. And I have this kind as well. The little quilters kind or whatever they are. I don't, there we go. Now where is my, oh, it's right here. Close that up and there we go. New needle book. Voila, it looks good. Hopefully it will last longer. That one lasted about three years. It's, it's not too bad. All right, kids, so whatever day it is today, whether it's the 15th or the 16th, whenever I upload this, whenever you see it, you have until next month on this day to get your projects done if you want to join the challenge. So just remember that it needs to be a book, like a physical project and not a digital representation. It has to have some kind of pages in it. But other than that, it just needs to reflect you, however that might be, whether it's a literal book or not. I'll leave it at that. You can do what you wanna do. I'm not your mom. Thanks for joining me today and watching me fumble through this, what should have been a very simple project and hear about the guidelines for the summer challenge. Maybe it's something that you're interested in doing, even though you might have some trepidation at first. Even if you never show it to anybody, I say try it anyway, right? It was great being with you guys today, and I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.